Good morning, TAVC. My name is Lucas, and I'm here to bring you announcements today. Um, our first announcement is next Sunday evening, we have our annual fish fry. Um, this is taking in place in place of Sunday Night Life groups. So don't go to Sunday Night Life groups. This is an opportunity for um, just our church to come in community and gather together. If you could bring two sides or one or two sides and a chair, um, that will help a lot in order to just feed everyone. So that's going to be awesome. Um, our next announcement is our men's group is our men's small groups are starting up. Um, use a QR code to sign up if you're interested or you have availability at those times. Both those books I've heard are very good. And yeah, it's just a really good opportunity if you are a male in the church to get involved. The next um, announcement is our parenting um, children's course. There's a new time. So it is being changed to Sundays and second service, I think in the East Building in room 205. Um, and that's starting on uh, next Sunday on the 25th of September as well. So you can register online with that as well. And our last announcement is our ambassador uh, wanted help sheets for the two weekends for missions conference. Uh, if you are wanting to either host a missionary or have him for a meal or um, donate a meal for one of the gatherings for the missions conferences, then those are due today. Either contact Christy Wright or hand your sheets off in the back of the church. All right. If you guys could stand and join me for worship before we um, join me in prayer before we go into worship, that'd be great. Jesus, we just thank you so much for your love, your grace and mercies that you just pour out to us every single day. God, help us to just focus solely on you as we worship, Lord. God, you are worthy of our song. God, we just want to know you deeper every single day. God, we thank you so much for your son, that he lived the life that we should have lived, died to death, that we should have died. God, help us to never um, forget the wonderful, beautiful message of that gospel, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Psalm 34, verses 1 through 3 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and rejoice. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Let's worship together our Lord Jesus. He's worthy. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part in this I see Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my cleansing this my plea Nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh, precious is the flow That makes me white as snow No other fount I know Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount i know nothing but the blood of 
Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. But the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, we just want to welcome you here this morning, whether you're here in person or online. We're glad that you're here. We want to partner with you on your faith journey wherever you're at. Um, if you would like to connect with us more, you can stop back by the information desk on your way out this morning, or if you're online, you can type in the comments to get a hold of us. This morning, the theme is all about that community, that we are all on the journey together, and we all need each other. God has specifically put gifts in each one of us that is unique, and we need each other. And so you will get to experience uh, several, a number of different ministries uh, later in the service, as you look around the room, there's going to be tables. And so, um, yeah, we just want to be open for how the Lord is leading us in whatever way he is. Our next step, um, serving in one of these ways. Um, so we want to worship him because he's worthy. And that's what these next songs are all about. That Why do we serve? Because he's worthy. He loves us. We serve a God who makes dead things come to life. Resurrection power is in Jesus. So I just encourage you to think about that as we sing this song. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed. Shout. 
A scripture reading now from Hebrews 10, verses 19 through 25. I'll read the leader parts, and you all please join and read the congregation parts. Therefore, brethren and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near. With a sincere heart and a full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And, and let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. Not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as we see the day drawing near. I want to invite you to be seated and just use this next song as a time for you to meet with the Lord. And Lord, we just ask you to you that you would speak to us. Holy Spirit, help us to hear from you what you are calling us to. What's the next step in our faith journey? Where would you like us to, to plug in? Uh, we just are open for your leading um, in this time. You're worthy. You're worthy of our worship. You're worthy of our entire lives. And we give you complete access to us. In Jesus' name, amen. song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes. to those around me Jesus 
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. this is just our declaration. We will build our lives on your love. It's a firm foundation. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation and I will put my trust for your love, your never-ending, unbroken, and forever love. And nothing can separate us from your love. Jesus, we love your leadership. We thank you for your life, your death, your resurrection, your ascension, and your authority that you give us in your name. And Holy Spirit, we just love you. We thank you for being with us. Thank you that you inhabit the praises of your people. So you're here with us today. We ask for your leadership in our lives, in this church body, in our family. Just fill us up with you so we can overflow with your fruit, the fruit of the Spirit to those around us as we serve in this body and we reach the community for you. We love you. We worship you. We trust you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. All right, we're going to take this next moment for our generosity moment. And if you have forgotten or you're new here, our generosity moment is essentially us taking intentional time to recognize that because God has been so generous towards us that we want to be generous back towards him. So physically in the room, if you'd like to give at this time, you can go to the back and there's a box where you can um, do that in person. If you're online and you want to do that electronically, there's a give or a donate tab. I'm not sure which it's called, but it's, it's up there and you can find it. So this is your time to do that as well. This is also a time to pray for the body, um, to pray for things that we know are going on uh, in our body here at TBC and lift those up to God as well. So um, you can see the ministries that we're going to talk more about in a minute, but you see the ministries around the room. So if you see one that catches your eye, you could lift up that ministry. Or like we said, if there's something specific that you know going on in our body or even out of it, but it touches someone in here, 
um, or online, that we want to lift that to God too because he cares about all those little details. So we're going to take a moment. We're going to thank God for being so gracious to us. We're going to take a moment to be gracious back to him, and uh, we're going to pray together. Lord, we love you. We thank you that you are so generous towards us. We pray for the ability by your Holy Spirit to be generous back to you, whether it's financially or with gifts or with time or whatever it is, God, but that we would be cheerful givers back to you because you've given so much for us. Lord, we lift up this body. We pray that it is one that is not just about talking the talk, but walking the walk, one that um, really does desire to be more like Jesus every day, one that is interested in in the lost world outside these walls, as well as building up the body inside, um, that we would just reflect you and your kingdom and what those, those goals are, God. So we lift up what's coming next, and we just give it to you. We ask for your Holy Spirit to be in here and a part of this, and we just acknowledge that nothing happens without you. It's in your son's name we pray all these things. Amen. All right, as we get started, um, Garen is not here, but he has a video for us, so we're going to play that. Hey, 12. Good morning. Good to see everybody, so I'm really, literally not looking at you right now. I'm staring at a phone. Um, but you've already noticed the tables around here, and you know that something a little bit unique and unusual is happening today. But this morning is really significant for us. We actually had planned to do this a little over two years ago, but COVID cut that whole thing short. But, you know, these five core practices are really core to who we are as a church, and they're core to following Jesus. And this this um, value, this practice of service is really, really important. It's one of the, those key five things. And we value it so much that we had decided as a staff and leadership quite a while back that this was something that we wanted to do to give us as a family the chance to live into that, that value of service. And so we're going to do something uh, during this service that's pretty unique. Uh, and so don't don't get nervous about it. It's, it's actually going to be, a, we think, a very exciting opportunity to really get to know this family better and to see what all this family does and opportunities there are to give service to this body, to be a part of it. Um, just like, you know, anytime one of our kids um, had a special event, the whole family would go. We would, we would take part in that. And that's kind of what this is. So we uh, are just, again, we're excited about this this opportunity and so what we're going to do is we actually have are going to have people during the service around at all the tables um, that represent the ministries that um, serve this body and all the different ways that people serve and all the different ways we're trying to have an eternal impact on the kingdom and it'll be a chance for you to get a big picture view of like a better idea um, of what's going on here with the body and we're, we're also doing this because I had asked last week, I had challenged us, that uh, if serving is not a part of, of what you do, if you're not serving the body, if you're not a contributing member of the family, I challenge you to put your yes on the table. Samuel talked about it starts with willingness and then intentionality. And so I said, just put your yes on the table. Yes, Lord, I do. I want to serve. I want to find a way that I can make an impact um, in this body. And this week's really all about intentionality. Samuel, you didn't mean to do it, but you really set us up really well for this week. This is a way for us now to give you a chance to step into that. So if you are not a serving part of this body, take this opportunity this morning to to go around, to visit the different ministries, and to find a place and say, you know what, there's a hole, there's a need, there's an opportunity for me, and I'm just going to, I'm going to jump into that, and I'm going to help meet that need, and I'm going to become a functioning part of the body. Because we need every every part of the body. That's what Paul says. Every ligament needs to be joined together and functioning. Each part of the body doing its part because we really do belong to each other. So if you're um, again, if you're not serving, take this as an opportunity to find ways to serve um, and jump in. 
you might find this a little overwhelming, just that's okay. Just start somewhere. Just go to a table that kind of grabs your interest. Look at a few. And you might be thinking, I don't even know what to do. I don't know where to start. And that's okay. That's how a lot of us start. My first serving opportunity is there was a need in our church after I become a believer with a Sunday school class with children with special needs. Um, and I just stepped into that and it was the first thing that I did and God blessed me so much through it. And the way you really figure out where you belong in the family is you just try something and you step in and you do it and you're like, man, this really is where I fit. I should be doing this a little better or different. Or you're like, this quite isn't my fit, but now I have a better idea of where. So just challenge you if you're not serving to, this is a way to put feet to your yes that I challenge you to put on the table. If you serve at 12th already, um, again, thank you for your service. A lot of you do it behind the scenes. Nobody sees. I know most of that, but God sees it all, and that that's the one that we're serving, right? We were motivated for His fame and His glory. And so we're not, if you're serving, we're not asking you to go take on another task. Um, we want you to be doing one thing well, and we want you to be staying healthy. But it is a chance for you just to walk around and to see all the things that are going on in our body, maybe to inform yourself, to go find out like what's happening in early childhood or what's happening with youth or um, what's that thing, that table that Caleb has over there with all the tools or whatever. Um, it's just a chance to get to know our family a little bit better. So looking forward to the service. Um, sorry we can't be there. This was the only week that Kieran had open that we could go and Pat still hasn't been out to Oregon to see him. Um, so we've had this thing planned since March. Um, wish we could be there, but I don't know. Somebody told me they said maybe it's God's sovereignty that you're not because this church is about the body. It's not about the pastor, right? And so it's probably God's sovereignty. So um, looking forward to hearing how the morning went and have been praying a lot for this. And my guess is, is now it's time to turn it over to Jordan. So you're in good hands with him. See you guys. You know, first service after that, you're in good hands part, there was a, a light snicker throughout the seats. You guys wouldn't do that to me, but first service, they, uh, they got me on that one. So Garen has been talking through something called the Engage series, and last week was all about how to engage with our gifts. And so today, what we want to do is talk about how to take those gifts and turn them into service for him. And, you know, Samuel and Ian were on stage last week, and Ian said something really profound. He said, it's not really about if you're serving, but it's really about who, because we're all serving someone. We're either serving ourselves, or we're serving God. We're serving something bigger than us. So it's not really about, do I want to serve? It's really about, where am I going to allocate my resources, because I ultimately am serving something. And so I wanted to go to a text that, that was kind of a key text for Garen last week, and just briefly read it for you. It's First Peter 4, 10 through 11, and it really kind of epitomizes what we're doing here today. So 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11 in the NIV says this. It says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. And so that's what it's about today, is realizing that, that this command to serve, it's clear in the Bible, right? That it's not something that is suggested by Jesus or that we can add on if we feel like we have enough time at the end of the week, but that if we're going to call ourselves Christians, we really have to serve. But why is that? Well, it's because Jesus embodied service. If you look at the life of Jesus, it wasn't th something he did once or twice. It was it was actually even more than a rhythm for him. It was who he was at his core. Um, just a few places that we see this in Scripture, Philippians 2, 6, and 7, it says that Jesus did not consider equality with God something to use for his own advantage, but he actually gave up his seat in heaven and made himself a servant here on earth. It's what he was here on earth. Um, the Apostle Paul writes in 1 John 2, 6 that if we're going to um, call ourselves Christ followers, that we have to walk as he did. We have to live as he did. We can't just talk about it. We've actually got to be about it. And then the Apostle Paul in Galatians 5.13, he talks about this freedom in Christ that we have. And he encourages the believers in Galatia to not use their freedom for themselves, but to use it to serve others. And so this command is so clear. This is just three verses, but it's all over God's word 
that if we are to follow Christ, that that means that we are to serve. And in fact, to call yourself a Christian means you are a little Christ, right? And so if you're going to if you're going to call yourself that, give yourself the title, you've got to do it too, right? Does that make sense? I mean, calling yourself a Christian without actually living as Jesus did, it's like calling yourself an athlete but never really participating, right? Um, you can show that picture. This is Jet, my four-year-old, and he is so sweet, and I love him so much. I would lay down my life for him in a moment, but if we can just be candid for a second, um, he's about as competitive as an onion ring, okay? He, like, he doesn't, he doesn't get it, and so he has started rec soccer. That was his first ever practice, um, which was something to behold, and then He's had a few games since then, so yesterday I took him to his game. Kate was with Maggie on her field because she's playing soccer too, and I had Jet, and Jet's getting out there. If you know how Jet runs, he runs like this. He sprints out there, and he's doing his little warm-up with his team, and he's all good, and I'm sitting by the bench, and I'm watching him, and the opening whistle happens, and he's out there on the field, um, but the ball is kicked, and if you've ever watched four-year-olds play soccer, it's like, it's like in... Um, like peanuts when the pig pig pen had like that cloud around him it's just a cloud of four-year-olds like all moving around this ball and so they're all moving around but not jet jet is watching the ball gets kicked and they're all chasing the ball around and jet is just very i mean he's paying attention he's very interested but he's just he's just watching watching it all happen and he's just planted right here watching and i'm like what is going on so the the coach pulls him eventually because you can't have a statue out there and so he comes he runs over to the bench he's all excited gives me a big high five I was like, Jet, you're doing so good. He said, yeah. And I said, one thing. First of all, uniform, on point. Looks good, okay? Shirt, cleats, shin guards, it's working. Second thing, do you think we're going to play at some point? And he's like, what? What do, you, what do you mean? And I said, well, Jet, like, everybody's running. They're getting in there. They're kicking the ball. They're doing the thing. And you're just standing there, buddy. And he goes, oh, Dad, I just want to watch. And if he had any concept of money, I would have said, well, that's cool, but I kind of paid 60 bucks for you to play. (laughs) So if we can play, that'd be great. We can watch for free any day you want. We'll come down here, watch your friends play, it'll be free. Um, But he didn't understand that, so I just said, okay, well, get out there, and if you feel like it, maybe get involved. So he did a little bit. But Jet was just standing there. He He was on the field, he was on the team, he had the jersey, but he was just content to watch everybody else do it. And that's all he was doing. And I fear that that can be us. I fear that can be us when we come to church. I fear that we can be people who are here to watch. And we forget that serving is not only good for the body, but it's actually really good for us too, right? Garen outlined this last time a few ways that it's good for us. One, serving allows us to know others and get to know others deeply in the body. Um, Two, that, that serving draws us closer to the heart of God. Three, that serving allows us to invest in eternity. Garrett talked about that moment in new creation where you might see somebody that you had the benefit, had the privilege of being a part of them getting to, to know Jesus and just what that could mean and how cool that is. Four is that, and this one really stuck with me, that, that serving keeps us from spiritual stagnation. And he talked about that stream that he saw that flowed into this little pool, but it, it welled up and it stayed there. It never flowed out and that water got stagnant and it stunk. And if there's one thing that students bring to me about their spiritual life, it's that, man, I just kind of plateaued and I'm not really growing anymore. I've been going to church for a long time and I'm not growing and I'm just here and I'm just doing it and I know what to do. And man, service is such a silver bullet when it comes to eliminating spiritual stagnation. It is so important that we do it so that we can keep growing. Um, My brother, Samuel, on stage last week, he shed some knowledge as well and he said something really good. He said a few things, but one that stuck with me was that you said serving gets you out of your own head. And I relate to that so much that when I, it's like an echo chamber up here sometimes, that I can get so self-focused and so self-critical and I can just never leave this space. But serving allows me to do that. It forces me to do it at first, but then it becomes a blessing that I can do something that's not for myself and it gets me out of my own headspace. I think we come to church, me too, and I think we can get in the habit of being served. And I think that we can get in the habit of being consumers. And I'm raising my hand on this because it's me. Um, It's so easy to come and clock in and just consume and critique and never invest. And we got to realize that it's it's not only better for the body when we invest, but it really 
is better for us, that we could find our purpose, that we could find our niche, and we could give to it. There was a 2011, 2011 study done by Barna Research, and they aimed to know, like the rest of us want to know, why all these kids are leaving the church after high school. And so they pulled a group of 18 to 29-year-olds who had grown up in church, but after that, they'd gone to college and never stepped foot in church again. So they pulled these, these students, these young people, and they said, why did you leave the church? And there were several reasons, but the one that really caught my eye was 25% of them, one quarter of them, said, I left the church because I never really found my purpose there. I showed up, I did the thing, I consumed, and it was fine, but I never really bought into a bigger vision. I never found my purpose. I never found a way to serve, and so I left. And we don't want that for our young people, and we don't want that for anybody. And I'm just here to say that service is so good at getting you off the bench, getting you into the game, like Aaron said last week, and giving you a purpose because we have to buy into something bigger than ourselves. You know, last week, um, Ian and Lucas, not Ian and Lucas, what's your name? Samuel. Brother Samuel. Ian and Samuel were up here, and they talked about how they served. And I look up to those guys so much. Truly, I do. And I want to be like them. There's so many things about them that I admire. And if you were here, you watched online, you heard about all the ways that they invest and why they value that. And I think that's so wise. But my fear is that last week we saw these two single guys up here. And from the seats, we said, they're single. They're not working 40 hours a week. They don't have kids, right? If I, that was me, I'd serve too, you know? And I want us to know that no matter your stage of life, there's a way to serve, there's a place to serve, and there's value in serving. Um, and so what I want to do is put somebody in front of you this morning who really embodies that, because Samuel and Ian did a great job for who they are, but I wanted to show you a different kind of servant here at 12, because there are many people serving who are in different stages of life um, who make it a priority, no matter where they're at or what their schedule looks like. So Prouse, if you guys want to come up, this is Tyson and Emily Prouse, and they've come to 12 for a while, and they have kids, and they have jobs, and they are involved in their community outside of 12. Um, different ways around Emporia, but also they make service a priority here. And so I wanted to ask them the question, first of all, how they do it and why they do it. If you're so busy, how do you make time to serve? And why do you make that sacrifice? Because it would be so much easier to eliminate something on the calendar, I'm sure. So with those two questions in mind, um, it's all you guys. The first thing I thought was you can work 40 hours a week. That's a, that's a possibility. Um, <laughs> Most of us don't do that. Um, so uh, we do serve. Uh, we've been serving for a long time here at 12th. We've been here since 05, 06, somewhere in there. And um, we, we've served in a variety of capacities. Um, and life has become exceedingly uh, busier for us. We've got a, uh, a ninth grader, a seventh grader, um, and a fourth grader. See how she did that? Um, so we've got three kids, they're, they're very involved, they're involved in activities and other things. Uh, we both also work, and so figuring out how to serve uh, has been important for us. Uh, we actually started serving before we had kids, so uh, serving kind of is second nature for us. We also grew up serving uh, in the church, um, and so we grew up with that as an understanding that ministry is just part of life, um, and we do that wherever we're at. Um, plugging into church has been really important for us to be able to serve here um, because um, not only does it strengthen those around us, um, but it also strengthens us personally. So our relationship with Christ improves when we're serving. Uh, additionally, our, our relationship when we're able to serve alongside one another, um, it strengthens <clears throat> us as a couple as well, So, uh, which consequently strengthens our family as well. So we often talk about how we don't have time, but uh, we've discovered that if we make time, um, that God really honors that, and he uses us. Yeah, and with that, um, he took some of my points from first service, so I have to rethink a little bit. But um, as he said, we grew up in a youth group and a church that serving was important, and it was what we did, and so it was ingrained in us. And I know that there are adults out there that don't have that, and I do encourage you to plug in somewhere, um, even if it's not your sweet spot. But if you have the time, it doesn't have to be a huge time commitment. Um, with women's ministries, we have some monthly time commitments. It, you know, it doesn't have to be a 
full-time job by any means, but it's really important to us that our kids see us serving and that they can serve alongside us um, when, when they can. And so I want them growing up just that with it being their second nature to do so. So I mentioned to our service, we've done Meals on Wheels, so that's not something in our body, but it's in our community. And that's something our kids actually encourage us to do. There have been times that we've thought, well, we're not going to do that for a while, but they actually wanted to get out of school lunch to go serve lunches. So um, that's one thing that is neat when you bring your kids alongside of you to do that. Um, and then also, um, we've talked about how we can be blessed when we're serving, and throughout the years, we've served in different ways, and we've met a lot of people throughout our church. And so, you know, when I hear people saying, well, I don't feel the community, I don't have community in my church, it's just coming and sitting in the seats and leaving then I challenge you that you probably haven't served because when you are working alongside other people, you're meeting them and you're getting to know them in ways that you don't even get to know someone in a small group as closely and intimately as you do as when you're serving alongside. And so I know for me, when I walk into this building, it's not about the building, it's about the people and it's about Christ and this place is home to me. And I feel that's because I know so many of you so well. So I would encourage you to visit these booths, to check something out, find something that meets your time commitment or your skill. It doesn't have to be your favorite thing, um, and God will use you, and he'll bring people into your life that you didn't know you needed. So, Cool. Thank you, guys. And you both do kids' ministry, and we know that when you do kids' ministry alongside somebody, it's like you've been to war together. So there are some scars. Yeah, uh, early childhood is not for the faint of heart. So if you really want to earn some stripes in the kingdom, you can, you can head over there. Tur- Prowses, thank you so much. Can we give them a round of, pro- of applause for being here? Tyson and Emily, we so appreciate you guys. Kate and I want to be like you when we grow up. So thank you for, for being up here. A few quick things, a few logistical things as we send you out. We're about to do the thing. One, on the screen, there's going to appear a slide with a URL as well as a QR code. What we want to do is, before we get up and disperse and do, do everything, we're going to ask you to take a quick survey that lists out some of the gifts that you have. It can help you um, kind of get plugged into different things here at 12. So you can, you can scan the QR card and do it there. You can plug it into your browser on your phone and do the URL. If you are old school or you forgot your phone, um, we have paper. So People are walking around with paper. You can just raise your hand. They will give you a paper one, and you can do that as well. So we're going to play a little music. We're going to do that. Right after that, um, we're going to go around, and you see the table set up. And so this is for you to both browse to get information and also inquire about serving. So if if the Holy Spirit has touched you over the last couple weeks, and you're like, you know what, I've got space for it. Even if I don't know if I have space, I know there's a call on my life to do it, and I need to, to serve in some way. Go sign up. Get more information on any of these booths. Like Garen said in this video, if you are already serving, this is not trying to put one more piece of food on your plate. This is not to load you up even more. So if you are already serving and you feel like um, you're playing your part well, we're, we're glad you're doing that. So go around. If you can encourage people who maybe look a little lost or just get more information about different booths, we bless you to do that too. So we all kind of have different roles this morning. Um, coffee and donuts. We're going to have Krispy Kreme and coffee kind of around the room. So as you're circulating, for sure, grab those things. And then don't leave when you're done because we're going to close together at 1210, so five minutes early. So really quickly, take your survey, QR code, link, or paper. Um, Some of us are looking to serve. Some of us are walking around and encouraging others and just getting information. So whatever you're going to do, that's great. Don't miss donuts and coffee around the room. And don't leave because we've got something good for you here at the end. Let me pray. And then we'll turn some music on. We'll start this whole process, and, uh, and we'll get it going. Father, we're grateful for this morning. We're grateful for your body. As I just kind of like take a quick look around the room, I see so many gifts and so many abilities that I don't have. God, it's so cool how you have brought 1 Peter 4 to life, and we see all the different um, gifts that you've given in this room. And so we just pray by your Holy Spirit to discern today how to use those gifts to serve your body. We want to be a blessing to the body, and we know that you promised to bless us, and we've seen it happen when we get out there and serve. So we love you. We give you this time. We invite you into this space. We pray that it's not by compulsion or guilt that anybody signs up for anything, but only if they really have have asked you about it and the Holy Spirit is moving them towards that, because that's what we want. So we love you, Lord. We give you this time. It's all for you and your kingdom. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
All right, you can begin your survey. We're going to play music. Stand up and go as you, as you, need, as you finish that, and uh, we'll see you back here in about 20 minutes or so. Hello, church family. All right, we're going to gather in a circle around the room. This was Garen's idea. Of course, he's not here, but we're going to do it. So would you please move somewhere to the edge, and let's make a circle around the room. We're going to sing just a little bit of a song, kind of to end out our time here this morning. Have to make some room, scooch over here and there. We have a lot of room right here. We're just going to sing the chorus of this song, Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. And just let it be our commitment to the Lord, what, whatever he leads, that, like Garen said, our yes is on the table. So let's sing this together. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. Yeah, I will follow you. Yeah. Sing that again. Where you go. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. want you to picture the face of Jesus. Like we said before, we're going to get to gaze on his face, face to face someday. But for now, just imagine that. And Jesus, we're going to give you our yes, whatever you say. Let's sing that one more time. I will follow. I will follow you. God, you're so worthy. We love you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for this place. And thank you for your body, Lord Jesus. Just continue to guide us and direct our path. And we're all in for you. Our yes is on the table. Wherever you go, stay, however you move, uh, we just love you. May you get the glory both today and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, church family, you are sent. Have a blessed day. Love you guys.